So right now we're talking about doing the ballast keel mold for the sailboat. So the ballast keel is going to be the big piece that fits underneath the wooden keel. It's a big piece of lead that basically keeps the boat upright. But in order for us to make that, we need to make a ballast keel mold first, which we started talking about in the last video. Steve and I had two options. We had the option of doing either an iron keel or a lead keel. Smelting iron is a little bit more in depth, and that's not something that Steve and I have the capabilities of doing here on the property. And to get one made for us would be about $30,000 or more. So basically we decided to go with the lead keel because that's something that we may be able to do here. Um, so right now we've been accumulating lead and that means that we're gonna have to make a smelter that's gonna be capable of holding 10,000 pounds of lead. We're gonna melt it here on the property and we're gonna need to pour it into our ballast keel mold. So. We haven't seen any projects on YouTube or anywhere on the net so far that are quite as large as this as a home build. So if any of you guys out there have done something like this, definitely comment below. We would really appreciate some insight on this. This is definitely the scariest part of the build for us. If there's any moisture in the concrete that we're going to be pouring into, the thing could explode because everything turns to steam really quickly. Um, so we're really, really nervous about this. We've been putting this off for a little bit and I know that people are waiting for it. So. Sorry that it's been taking so long, um, but we're hoping to get that done in the coming months. So that'll be coming soon. Um, right now though, we're gonna walk you through basically the steps before that. We need to make the mold, which we already started with the plug. And um, now we're gonna show you the box, which we basically made to hold that. First and foremost, before setting anything up like this, you need a flat and relatively level surface. So while I was at work, Steve started on that fun process. Whew. There's a lot of unglamorous work involved in this. But, you know, that's how it goes. How was that? <laughs> I suppose that's why this thing's got a diesel case so I can do stupid stuff like that. All right, I think that's good for now. I'll make Alex finish it tomorrow. <laughs> and that I did, but we've already seen enough of that. While Steve worked on welding the supports for the smelter, I made sure the space was large enough, laid down some plastic to keep the moisture down, and checked that it was relatively level. As you can see, we really don't want any moisture coming up from the ground. So that's the box behind me. Um, it's basically just thick plywood. There's two plies of it um, screwed together. And then we're gonna be building a frame right around it, basically to hold it together. If anything happens, all that outward pressure is gonna be held in by strapping and angle iron. As you can imagine, a box full of concrete and 10,000 pounds of molten lead pushing out is a lot of force. So we wanted to make sure that this box was diesel.
In order to kind of get going on this project and not be focused on the nitty gritty details, we kind of did a very sparse um, framing around it. So you can see there's only a couple of the angle irons um, and Steve is going to go back soon and put those bracings in and we're gonna lock the whole thing together. But for now, let's focus on filling this thing with concrete. We started the concrete mixing process in a small cart and eh, that didn't really work that well so we dumped that in and started working directly in the box. As this is our first time doing anything like this, it's obviously been quite a challenge. When we first decided to pour the cement, we totally underestimated how much we needed and we ended up pouring a thin layer on the bottom, which we were a little bit nervous about, but it never ended up touching the bottom of the plug. So right now, um, we're gonna put it in now and we'll set the bottom in. Yeah. Frustrating. It is. Yeah. It's been very frustrating up to this point. I mean, how do you feel about where we're at right now? About a second pour. I wouldn't have much of a choice. Yeah. We're not touching. So we should end up with a solid layer underneath. Okay. I would be much more concerned if we were part way up the mold. Yeah. But the, I don't even know if we're The good news is, Steve managed to get more concrete and topped it off so that it was level with the plug, which is exactly what you need. So right now we have a solid structure um, that encompasses the entire plug, which we then have to take out, which is really weird as well. A lot of the processes so far have been building something that is then going to be destroyed and not be the final product on the boat. Um, but that's the nature of it, and soon we'll be building things that are actual pieces of the boat, which is gonna be super exciting. Um, so stay tuned for those. Now for the unveiling. With the top open, we now had to dismantle the frame and pull the rest of the pieces out. All while being careful not to damage the concrete, of course. I didn't expect it to be so difficult, but the ends of the plug got really stuck in the concrete. 
It's a good thing we both could fit in tight places. Beans! Woo! I'm hot and sweaty. This is a big space, but we have a lot of lead. We have a lot of lead. Yeah, even just imagine that really big piece in here would cover that and almost half of it. Yeah. This is a big piece of lead, though. This is a big piece of lead. Oh, good. <laughs> so now I can get the cores made, and we can figure out where those are going to land. You use keel bolts to hold the lead keel onto the wooden keel, which means we have to have holes drilled for our final product. What people usually do is they put in cores. Cores are basically a piece of wood that you put into the mold, and once you pour the lead into it, the lead is hot enough to char those cores, and then they kind of leave a ragged hole inside the keel, which you then use as a pilot hole to drill down into. And get those anchored. I think we'll have to drill down through the concrete here to anchor this core. Mm -hmm. We'll just go right down with a masonry bit and then nip it in the bottom. And then we can just put the piece in there and put one screw in from the top. And by the time we add bracing, there'll be two between each of these, so every 16 inches. Yeah. And strapping that goes across the top. And then I think the flat strapping's cheap enough. I think I'm also gonna weld a piece that goes along here and just like boxes in the top of this. And then I almost wonder if we don't throw a sheet of plywood over the whole thing. Put the spigot in here, stop the sheet of plywood like here, put another like piece of plywood here. Yeah, just to keep Throw it. Throw some weights on it. Like if it does want to spit. If it does want to spit, hit. or if something really does go wrong and the concrete has a lot of moisture in it and the whole thing just explodes, at least it's something to like, you know, dampen yeah. it and try to contain it so it doesn't just go everywhere. But I think give this a few weeks and we'll heat it up really good with the flame leader. I think we'll be alright. Cool. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, definitely enjoyed doing this. Uh, it's really weird for me to be using the vlog style. I'm not really used to being on camera. Let me know what you guys think of this down in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it, if you're looking for something else. We really want this to be a community-oriented project. So even though Steve and I are building this boat for us, we really are looking forward to being able to take people out, to talk about this, have people over here see the boat, see the project. Um, so feel free to contact us through comments or even email us through the website. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Also, I want to remind you guys that we're going to be headed up to Bucksport, Maine at the end of September for the International Maritime Film Festival. It's put on jointly by Downtown Bucksport and by Wooden Boat Magazine. So check that out. We are super excited to show our film there and we're really looking forward to meeting people. So hopefully we see you there and have a good one. Filming. Looks like it. Oh god, this is weird. Alright, so look into the camera.